You are now tuned in to the network, the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics, dumbs them down to a more simpler language, more layman's terms. Today's topic we'll be covering is section 6.2a, configure and verify SNMP. We're going to be covering SNMP version 2 today. This is a topic in the CCMP route exam. It'll be known as the CCMP Enterprise exam come February 24th, 2020. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exam blueprint and see where we came from, and where we are headed. Hashtag lab every day. Also, go ahead and visit laboveveryday.com and maybe in the future, networkbroad.com. All right, this is the uh, exam topics implementing for San Francisco IP routing. It's exam code 300-101. It'll be 300-401 in the future. We just covered the section T. FTP, which is Trivial File Transfer Protocol. Today, we're going to be doing verifying, configuring SNMP. We're going to do version two today. I was going to try to put them in both in one videos, but y'all know I like to keep these short, like, you know, little nuggets. You know, I'm following somebody else's blueprint. <laughs> Anyways, after that, we'll do version three. And I had a little issues with the version three portion because I couldn't get the application installed, but we'll get into that later. Anyways, what is SNMP? So SNMP stands for Simple Network Management protocol. It's a protocol or you know set of rules or language that we use to manage our networking devices. And uh, the main reason why is because we use it to alert us when something's wrong with our network, something wrong with our devices, or just give us informational, just informational uh, alerts. So when I think of SNMP, I kind of think of SNMP as the the lights on your on the dashboard of your car, right? You know how you something's wrong with your car, you'll get you know if you're low on gas, you'll get this little symbol right here, right? If you are you know your the ABS brakes or something wrong with them, you'll get that light. If you have the check engine light, then you know you got the check engine, right? Or it could be just for informational reasons, like hey, you got just to let you know your high beams are on, and you probably blind as somebody, right? And that's exactly how SNMP works. It gives us alerts. As a matter of fact, that's what I do pretty much all day at my job. I do network monitoring and the basis, the core of it is SNMP. It uses SNMP to what's called poll these devices or see if they're alive or see if something's wrong with them. And then it gives you alerts to let you know, hey, you know, this interface went up or hey, this router is down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the official definition though. So SNMP stands for Simple Network Management Protocol. It's an internet standard protocol for collecting and organizing information about managed devices on IP networks and for modifying that information to change device behavior. So we could also use it to, let's say you have a, a router that's all the way in I don't know, Wisconsin, right? And you don't want to go over there to configure it. Obviously, you could either SSH to it or you could just do what's called an SNMP walk. And if you have read, read write permissions on it, you can change the host name through SNMP. You don't have to necessarily console into the device to do it. You can do it through SNMP. Devices that typically support SNMP include cable modes, routers, switches, servers, uh, lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, right? Everything. You can do it on printers for crying out loud. There's three significant versions. In short, you got SNMP 1, version 2, version 2C, which is using the community strings or passwords, and then version three, which is the newest one, version three uh, has a feature improvements. You know, you can do your, you know, uh, encryption and all of that. Now, uh, we'll go over the comparison between all three versions as well. Before we do that, let's talk about SNMP as a whole. We have, we defined the parts of the network that we use for, as, as for SNMP. So we have the manager, would be would be your, like your management laptop or your laptop that you use the console into a device or whatever. It's basically, the application, the application will be on your manager because you, you have to use a third party tool or, you know, uh, a lot of times it's you'll use a third party tool, which is GUI based, which means you can see, you know, colorful graphs and everything saying, hey, your CPU is up or down. Right. The manager pulls agents on agents on the network. So in other words, it just checks in with them. Just be like, hey, you OK interface? Hey, you OK switch port? Hey, you OK loopback? You know, and just make sure everything is all right with the network. And it does that. It pulls the network. You can, I believe you can configure the the intervals, but basically it pulls the network. Y'all know I'm in my garage and my girl pulled up with her hot ass engine. Anyways, it correlates and displays information, just like I said. So you'll see colorful graphs and it looks real pretty. I'll show y'all an example. And I believe it's Power SNMP that we're going to use for SNMP version two. Next video, we'll do version three. And we're going to use a different application. Um, so SNMP supports message exchange. It also runs on IP. You know, that is, that's internet protocol. The also, and that's what the 
SNMP runs on. It's a protocol, right? So it's a set of rules. So it's kind of like a language, but it's not a computer language like Java or, or Python or something. But it is a protocol that we use to pull our devices. So the SNMP messages is what we do. You can you can do a wire chart capture and, and capture SNMP messages. Again, it runs on SNMP. Then we have the agent. The agent we have to declare as an, an a device as an agent, and that's going to collect and store information on the device. So we say we have a I don't know a router, and we declare that router as an agent. It is going to collect information about its interfaces, about its CPU, about its flash drive, or, or you know flash storage, whatever you want, right? And then it will respond to the manager, who is the PC right here with the application, the SNMP application, to let them know, hey, this, you know, whatever, this switch port went down. Or, hey, um, my CPU is a little too high. It'll let them know because if he does, if he's not polling for it, if he just happens to not poll for it at the moment. The agent is also what generates traps. And what are traps? Traps are kind of like it captures information. I guess that's why they call it traps. It captures information. So if we have, let's say we have um, somebody just unplug the cable right it's going to generate a trap and be like oh i just realized somebody unplugged the cable that's what the agent is going to do then he will let the manager know i got an snmp trap somebody just tra unplugged the cable and that's what the trap is basically um the mib not men in black y'all remember my corny corny video that i did in the first video of this playlist y'all go ahead and see that video i, I was you know, i was just acting corny but anyway MIB is a database of objects, right? So just like the objects that we we're saying, you know, you can take a device and split it into many parts. You know, you got the CPU, you got the the mem the flash memory, you have switch ports, you have uh, VLANs, you have a whole bunch of stuff that's on this router, right? Just like the parts of a car, right? So let's say you got a flat tire. Boom, you're going to get a message that says, hey, you got a flat tire. Well, MIB will be just a collection of the database. So it would be like, okay, your tire, your engine, your exhaust, your, you know, your AC. It'll be a list of objects, but but just the parts of the of the switch or the router or the printer, whatever. Hey, your ink is low. Hey, your switch port, you know, is exceeding its its uh you know bandwidth or throughput, whatever. Um, and that is your database of objects, your management information base, all the stuff that you are monitoring, right? And then the MIB also reads and writes community strings for controlling access, right? Community strings is basically the password. I don't know why I only just call it pa a password, but community strings, I guess it's just like a string of characters. Maybe that's why I want to call it that. There's also something about this slide that I realized wasn't really explained on here. There's also the OID. Y'all want to write? Y'all want to write this down because I didn't have time to gather information on that but it basically the oid is an object identifier it's basically like an id for the parts of your car right say the tire like the rear left driver side tire right that would be part 1b right so the 1b would be your object identifier right and every part of that car of this car has an identifier so that way it knows same thing with the parts of a router or a switch or a printer or a, a phone whatever you're monitoring has object identifiers. The router, the serial port has object identifier. You'll see them. They'll be like a long string of numbers. It'd be like 1.9.4.0.8. It's usually numbers just like that, right? Every part has an object identifier. Just remember that. That's called an OID. So we have SNMP version two. Uh, that's what we're going to be covering today in the lab. Uh, it's defined by our, these RFCs. Basically, they just... Uh, Y'all know I don't like to get too technical with my stuff. But anyways, if y'all want to read this, pause it, freeze frame it. Anyways, includes improvements from SNMP 1. Let's go ahead and go to compare the, the uh, we'll, we'll compare them after this. Actually, let's go ahead and compare them right now. So you got SNMP 1, there's version 2. The 2 is not on here, but they kind of basically made 2C and added the strings or passwords, right, to it. And as well as authentication and stuff. And then there's version 3. Now, if you know anybody that's running SNMP version 1, you, you, that person need to be shot. Anybody that is, that's on that on that team and they have they know they run an SNMP version one, they need to be they need to be held liable for that because that we don't want to use SNMP one. It has passwords in plain text. Authentication using community and, and, and community strings in plain text. There's no bulk retrieval available, so you can't you know gather all this information about of this device 
get and, and bring it to your you know SNMP manager, you, you don't want to use SNMP one. I doubt it. it's not covered on this exam. As you can see, we're covering version two and version three, right? So today's lab, we're going to be covering version two, specifically, I believe, 2C. It's same as SNMP one. However, there's plain text authentication using community strings. So it's using community strings. It is plain text, but again, yes, yeah, it's, it's almost the same, but there's bolt retrieval available in this. Now, version three, there's authentication, strong authentication. It's confidentiality. So in other words, you can use the username, password, confidentiality, there's encryption and integrity, meaning nobody messed with it or while, while it was while the data was in transit, right? And there's also bulk retrieval available. So let's go ahead and fire up these devices. I had turned them off while I was, you know, before I started recording because these things are loud. Yes, I'm using my hardware. We could have done GNS3, but y'all know I like to mix it up. Packet tracer, hardware, GNS3, maybe viral soon, whatever. Anyways, let's go ahead and fire these bad boys up. They are very loud. I want, I'll let y'all hear them right now. And that's just the switch. We got round two, and there go round three. Y'all hear that? Let's go ahead and uh, experiment with SNMP version two. All right, so here is the lab we're gonna be working with today. Uh, I already have these bad boys cabled up. I've got a uh, PCA, which will be the PC that you guys are looking at right now, plugged into Fast Ethernet 06 of this switch one. And then he will be declared an SNMP agent. The PC again will be the SNMP manager. We also have a cable going from FA05 to G to Gigabit01 to Router1, which will also be declared as an SNMP agent. And I also have a serial cable. Yes, I have a physical serial cable. But anyways, yes, I have a cable going from Router1 to Router2. And Router2 is what you see in the background right here. So we already I already have the IP addressing guide, uh, IP addressing set up here. Let's go ahead and get right to it. We need to change the uh, SDM template. We are, I believe, console into the switch. Enable mode, class is the password. We are now logged into the switch. You can check, show, SDM, prefer. Again, if you need a refresher on SDM templates, I created a video and a switch playlist of my channel. So go ahead and check that out. That was the very first video I did for this channel. That's what actually got me to start it. So we're gonna go, they want us to change it to land-based routing. What are our options? We'll go to global config mode, SDM prefer, we could either do access default, dual IPv6 and uh, four and six routing and LAN, uh, LAN uh, v, v, VLAN bias. They said LAN based routing in here and I'm running, I believe version 12 maybe or 15. Either way, they wanted LAN based routing. We don't have LAN based routing on here. So we're just gonna do SDM prefer routing. And what are we running right now? Let's see, I believe I'm running routing. Yeah, we're doing desktop routing. We'll leave that as is. I think I already experimented with it, so we're not gonna do a reload. Save us some time here. Required resources. If you are wanna run this lab, go ahead and download. I'll put the link in the description below of this document right here. Again, this is from, I believe, the Cisco Network Academy. They wanted us to download and install SNMP Manager. We already did that. Let's go ahead and fire that bad boy up. This one is called Power SNMP Free Manager. You can download this for free on that link right there. Uh, maybe put the link in the description below for that as well. We need to hurry up and get to it, don't we? All right, so notice this window right here says agents. We don't have any agents declared and that's what we're gonna have to do. But first we're gonna set up SNMP. Oh, I did forget to show y'all the basic syntax for it, didn't I? Let's go ahead and go over that real quick. Basic configuration example, you wanna co uh, create an access list, which what we're gonna do. The, S the access list we're gonna create will be for this PC or your manager, right? And that's the only person that you want to have access or maybe if you wanna add people, that's why it's, it's very good practice to create an access list for your managers. Then you just do SNMP server, community, and then write the string or password you're gonna create and read only. So that way they can't make any changes or anything like that. This password will be like kind of like the uh, read, this, will, this one will have read and write permission. So you do SNMP server, community, write the password. This has read and write permission. So if they wanna change the host name via SNMP, they can do that because they have read and write permissions, right? The one, not too sure, I don't remember what that is. I believe that is maybe the, oh, that references the access list. That's what that one is. So if we put a five here, it'll reference access list number five, right? SNMP host, and this will be the host that will be monitoring. So like it could be the router, the switch or whatever. This address right here is the PC that you are 
getting all the information to, right? Your uh, manager. So remember, the access list you create for the manager and the SNMP host is the actual device that you are monitoring or that Toyota or that Infinity or that Lexus, whatever the case may be. You do traps, version, and you pick the version. For this one, we'll do version 2C, right? So we're pretty much the same thing. And notice this is what we're going to be doing with this lab right here. Let's go ahead and we are we are in switch one right now. Actually, they want us to configure an agent on router one first. So let's go ahead and console the router one. Go to enable mode or use a privileged exec mode. And now we're logged in the router one. And we're just going to run these permissions here, right? Or these com um, commands right here, right? So we go to global config mode, SNMP hyphen server. And here's our options. We have tons of SNMP server options. In this case, we're going to do the community, which tells you it's to enable the SNMP and set the community string and access privileges. Community, and they said Cisco Lab will be the community string. We're going to give what? It says here, we could either do read only with this string or read and write. We're going to do RO for read only and then create an AC or add an ACL to it at the end. They want us to name it SNMP underscore AC, ACL, right? So there, we did that. We're going to do SNMP. Notice most of the commands start with SNMP server. We're going to do location. So we could just put our address or whatever, you know, where, wherever this, this device is located. If we wanted to put that, this device is located in, you know, remote office B at 123 Anytime Street. We can put that information here. I see a lot of this stuff in my job, but they just want us to put SNMP underscore manager. We can also set a contact. How many times have you run into a device on your network and you realize who manages this device? You can do SNMP server, check the locate, I mean, check the contact and you'll realize that the, in this case, Cisco lab admin. Oh, I know that. That's this guy. I don't feel like working on this device. Let me call him and let him know his switch is down. That's where we put the uh, contact information. Don't forget the contact keyword here. So he is the contact. We're going to do, we're going to say who the host is, right? Who is the host? It says here 1.3. Who is 1.3? 1.3 is PCA, right? So we're going to make him pretty much the manager. PCA will be the manager, right? So SNMP hyphen server host, right? It says here host, the host IP address of it. We're going to do 192.168.1.3. We can pick our versions here. We talked about what the difference between 1, 2C, and 3 is. So we're going to say we're doing 2 C, and then they want us to put the community string for the host, right? Cisco Lab is the community string. We're going to enable traps on the next step. And remember, this is step by step right here. You want to pause it, freeze frame it, SNMP server, and then what are our options? We have enable. What do they want us to enable? SNMP traps. But before we can do that, let me do a show run. I hope maybe I might have enabled it already. No, I didn't. Okay, good. So if we do notice our show run here, right? We didn't have much. The only SNMP stuff we ran so far was this stuff. We could also do a show SNMP, see what we got so far. We have an SNMP manager. That's pretty much it. Show, let's get out of this and do show, show SNMP. What can we run here? We can do contact. Let's see what a contact is. Contact. Cisco Lab Admin. If we had an address, we can check the show SNMP location. Where is this device? Oh, this is located in the manager's office, SNMP manager. Let's go check it out. How many times have you had a site or a big network and you don't know where a specific switch is or specific devices? This is helpful to keep this information up to date. SNMP hyphen server enable, right? What are we enabling? Traps. What are the traps? Let's check. There's so many traps that we can set for. We can set PGP traps, AAA traps, CCME traps. I don't even know what that is. Uh, dot one eleven traps. We can set traps for, it's just like the parts of a car. We can set a trap for the tire. We can set a trap for the engine. We can set a trap for the exhaust, the intake manifold. We can set you know traps for several parts of this. If you just do enable traps, you're gonna set traps for everybody, for everything. So y'all seen the show run, right? We, didn't, we only had like three commands in there. If you want to rewind and check it out, but if we do SNMP enable, uh, enable traps, I get this error here. It says, cannot enable both Shamlink. I didn't really look what that one is, but I didn't have to really worry about it. Shamlink, I don't think I have the Shamlink interface, so that's probably why. 
Uh, I need to really, I forgot what those are. I think it has something to do with uh, OSPF, but I can't remember. But anyways, if you do a, let's do a show run and you'll see. Notice all these traps we set for. We set traps for the, the TTY lines, DS1, EIGRP, even though I think it's set up on here. Environmental monitor. So if like a fan goes down or the CPU is too hot, that sort of thing. We set a trap for that. We have all these different traps. WLAN web dot 111 authenticate you know we have all kinds of traps that we have set for this so we're pretty much monitoring everything on this device and that's what we're doing here with snmp enable traps next we're going to uh create an access list ip access list standard snmp underscore acl and we are going to permit who 1.3 who's that we're permitting him the manager this guy right here on the left hand side pca to be our uh, he is going to be permitted to check the parts of our car or the parts of our device and uh we're permitting 192.168.1.3 and that's who we're permitting next step here says at this point you may notice pair snmp is receiving notifications from router one if it is not you can force an snmp by doing copy run start let's see do we have any traps here not yet so let's go ahead and copy run start then continue the next step if it's un unsuccessful uh, let's not even do that because I don't want to save my stuff on here. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's just shut something down real quick. Let's do a show IP and freeze brief. You'll see the trap show up here at the bottom, right? So let's go ahead and shut down loopback zero. Interface loop zero. Shut him down. Do you have anything? Nope, not yet. So I guess we're going to have to do a copy once. Oh, there it is. It shut down. Did we get any traps yet? We did enable traps for it. There they are. There's the traps. Let's take a look at them real quick, real quick, right? This is trap two message version two, right? Outgoing port is 1.1. Who's that? 1.1 is that trap came from GI01 of router one, right? Right here, right? So it came this way, right here. What's this next trap say? We received version two through this port, destination address this, which is the PC. The community string was Cisco lab, ID two. Here's the values, loop back zero. What happened to it? It's administratively down. System uptime, here's the object identifier that we set. That's basically the part number for loopback zero. Sweating my behind off in here. I need to get a fan of anybody. I'm gonna create a uh, Amazon wish list and send it to y'all, but I need a USB fan for like $5. I'll get one soon. But anyways, that's basically what that trap is. We've cr we created two steps, two traps just by shutting down loopback zero. So if anybody unplug, you know, a switch, you're gonna know about it. If you have SNMP set up, trap set up. So we don't have to do a copy run start here. Y'all know I like to keep my devices clean. We're going to discover SNMP agents from the SNMP manager on PC8. Open the discover SNMP agents window. So discover. Okay. So now they want us to add router one as a as an SNMP agent. So we're going to do, we're not skipping that part actually. So discover SNMP agent. And we're going to put the IP address. We're going to do I add agent. And we're going to set router one. As an agent, what's his IP address? 192.168.1.1, right? So we'll do that. 192.168.1.1. We're going to leave the port as is. We're going to say version 2. This community string was Cisco Lab, right? Once we do that, we should see the description of the device. And once you see that, that's how you know it's running just fine here. And there it is. We have our iOS software, the platform, the version of iOS which is from 12.4. Yes, I do need to upgrade. And we've added, uh, we're going to add it once we click OK. And now we've added Route 1 as an agent because he's added he's added right here. What did we say agents are? We said agents collect and store information, right? It responds to manager requests for information and it generates traps. So in this case, we essentially declared Router 1 an agent. So next step says configure switch one as an SNMP agent. You can use the same SNMP server commands that you use in router one. So let's go ahead and console enter router one. Y'all give me a second here. Correction, switch one. I'm console into switch one again. And if y'all want to skip this part, but basically we're going to do the same thing we did on router one on router two, right? These same commands right here, right? So we're going to go to global config mode and we're going to say SNMP hyphen server community Cisco lab read only 
SNMP underscore ACL. I could have just copied and pasted stuff, huh? Location, SNMP underscore manager. I hope I don't make any typos here. SNMP server, contact, Cisco lab underscore admin, SNMP hyphen server, host, 192.168.1.3, version 2 Charlie, Cisco lab, and we're going to say SNMP. Before we enable the traps, let's do it again. Do show run. You can see the only SNMP commands that we have here is pretty much these guys right here, right? We have VStack. I think I was experimenting with Ether channels and stuff. I got some good, uh, good stuff coming my way. I'll keep y'all updated. Let's go ahead and enable the traps now, right? SNMP hyphen server enable traps. Once we enable traps, we don't get any messages, right? But if we do a show run. I don't know if there's an SNMP show SNMP traps. Maybe we could try that as well. If you do a show run, y'all remember we gotta try to stay away from show run, or else you'll be space barring. And if you got you know time test, you ain't got time to be space barring to something that's got a lot. Look at all this stuff that we enable traps for. OSPF traps cluster. We've got a trap for the uh, entity CPU threshold in case we you know we get a broadcast on enable traps for VTP BGP license stack wise. We've created traps for all the parts of our car. In this case, all the parts of this 3750 switch. So anything goes down, oh, we gonna know about it. We're gonna create an, an access list now. Let's do a show SNMP. Let's get out of that and see if there is an SNMP trap. Show, show SNMP traps. Can we do SNMP user traps pending session? Object ID, contact, host location. Nah, we can do MIB my objects. No, I definitely probably didn't want to do that. No, we don't want to do that. That that shows like the parts of the car basically. That's what we're doing there. Let's leave that alone for now. Create an access list. Go to global config mode. IP access list standard SNMP underscore ACL. I want to try to get this up for y'all by by seven. Y'all know I'm try to keep this video short, and I want to try to get this video for y'all every day. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. You might not get a video from every day from me, but I do lab every day. All right. Or I attempt to at least. Uh, and I hope you guys do the same. This is how you ingrain these topics in your mind and stuff. You get more experience this way. I don't have too much, you know, in production experience, but this is how I'm getting my experience. Anyways, we created the uh, access control list on switch one as well. After we configured SNMP on a switch one. We should get traps for SNM uh, for the switch. So here is a trap for the switch right here. Let's go ahead and check this guy out. We have 1.2 is the incoming port, version two. It came in at 6.18, right now 6.19. So yes, this came from the switch most likely. We could check that out by just shutting down the port, right? Let's go to interface, uh, oh, FA0 or one, FN0 hyphen, I don't know, 20. And let's shut that port down, right? Y'all see, y'all see what happens, right? Check out the uh, port. Check out these right here at the bottom, right? We are gonna shut that port down, and we got a, we got something, right? See that trap right there that just came in? If you want, what you could do is you could take this object identifier, look it up in the Cisco's website, and it'll tell you what that is. Some of these are not very intuitive, right? Remember the other one said loop back zero, right? This one didn't say that, so that's where the object identifier look up. We'll do that in a second here. Convert. That's basically what we got to do here. So we, we did, uh, let's go ahead and add switch one as an agent, right? We said discover SNMP agent. What is the IP address of switch one? It is right here, 1.2, 192.168.1.2. So we're going to add him as an agent, 192.168.1.2. We do version two, Pat, this community string was, I believe, Cisco Lab. We do OK. And notice right there, it says this is a 3750 switch. It is running the IP services K9. And you're running version 15.0. Okay, I guess I didn't have to upgrade that one. I believe I did that. I bought this switch on eBay, 50 bucks. These switches really came down. And um, yeah, I upgraded the iOS. I believe the other ones, I did not upgrade them just yet. So I will do that in the future. That's just another project I have at home. So now they want us to convert OID codes with the SNMP manager, uh, SNMP object manager. So we're going to go to the Cisco website and take one of these codes and, and convert it OID. We're not going to do that just yet. Let's do... Well, let's clear these traps. So we're going to click in here, clear. 
now we don't have any traps in here, right? Traps are basically the alerts, right? So generate an SNMP trap and notification. On router one, configure the serial triple zero interface according to the uh, addressing table. So we're gonna go to router one now. Okay, I'm consoled into router one right now, right? Right, and then it says here to configure the serial triple zero one, a uh, triple zero interface. And remember, we don't have anything in our traps window here, right? No alerts, right? So let's see here. Router one configure the serial triple zero interface. So we want to do serial triple zero interface, which is this guy right here, and make it that IP address, right? So we'll show IP interface brief. And did I do serial triple zero yet? I guess I already did that, didn't I? No, I didn't. It's up, up, but we need to fix the interface there. So Let's go to global config mode, interface serial, triple zero. Let's shut that bad boy down. Let's shut it down, right? We shut it down and notice we have a trap. We have two traps, right? And then he said to IP address needs to be 192.168.2.1, right? Slash, uh, what's that? Slash, what's that subnetting? Slash uh, 30, right? So IP address is 182.168.2.1/32.55.255.255.252, and then we're going to do a enable an interface to generate the trap. Let's go ahead and clear it again because we were supposed to bring it up when we enable it. So we're going to clear the traps. Do a no shut. We should get some more traps, and there they are right there. Notice the enterprise OID codes that are visible in the traps window. So here's the enterprise OID codes. Remember what I said? It's like every part of a car has a identifier, right? The tire on the driver's side front part of the car is part 1B4, right? So when you see 1B4, you're gonna be like, what the hell is 1B4? You gotta go to the Cisco website and find out what 1B4 is. In this case, we have this part window, this part, this OID, and they want us to know what this is. It's kind of self-explanatory here, right here, it says zero triple zero went up. So that did help, but if we take this OID right here, Go to the Cisco website and look for SNMP Object Navigator. So let's go ahead and do that. SNMP Object Map Navigator here at Cisco's website. Let's go to go. I don't like going here. Let's do SNMP Object Navigator. I believe we got to have to log in after this. Here's the Object Navigator. And here is the uh, site, right? So we take the object, you take that OID, you paste it in here, and this is where you're going to get like the parts of the car with their corresponding ID numbers. That is when an object O identifier is. So you click translate. Notice link up. That's what that means. That's what the object identifier means. So it's also, so that's my bad on that. It's also the actions of the part. So like you have part one, it says one four B, right? It says front tire. Well, what's wrong with the front tire? Flat, low air, you know, is, is there a puncture? Whatever. That's what these object identifiers do. So it also identifies the actions of what happened and uh, and what ha and what part of the car or in this case what part of the router what part of the printer what part of the firewall that has changed so objects and their actions right so we went ahead and did that they've got some reflection questions i don't know if y'all want to go over that what are some of the potential benefits of monitoring the network well, obviously when something goes down you don't know about it why is it preferable to solely use read-only access when West, uh, working with SNMP2. Well, if you do read-write access, you're going to give permissions to your agents, right? And if you don't have an access list, people can see that and they can get on there and they have, they'll be able to access your devices and do anything they want with it. They can change the host name, they can shut ports down, they tear down your network. We don't want that. So that's why it's preferable to have read-only access. So that way, whoever's gonna be monitoring your devices, you'll see they can only read the contact. They can only read the location of the device. They can only read what port this is. That's and so on and so forth, right? Anyways, that is all I got for y'all today. Next video, we're going to cover version three. It's going to be the same, pretty much the same topology. We'll go over that. That is my YouTube page. That is my Twitter handle. Go ahead and add me on Twitter. Send me the messages. Leave some comments below on this video if you like. Please, 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 please hit that like button. Try to step my subscriber game up. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends about this channel if they want to get into networking. Y'all know I try to simplify this stuff and dumb it down because anybody can learn this stuff. And I'm trying to get certified and I want you guys to share. I want to share my journey with you guys. Anyways, comment, like, subscribe to the network.